By now you might have heard the news about the planet known as K218b, the very strange Hycean world, simulated right there behind me, that potentially resembles a very strange water world with a very thick hydrogen atmosphere, relatively hot conditions, and very likely a large ocean on the surface. But the water in this case is maybe not liquid, and is probably in supercritical state, very similar to what we find around hydrothermal vents deep in the oceans. And as we've discussed in one of the previous videos that should be in the description, an extremely recent analysis using the data from James Webb Space Telescope was able to produce a relatively accurate observations of what's happening in the atmosphere of this unusual exotic world. And though some things we kind of expected, such as methane and CO2, some were very unexpected. DMS or dimethyl sulfide, a gas that here on Earth has always been associated with life. It's a biosignature. And so in this video I wanted to go through some more details in regards to this gas, what we actually know about its presence on potentially other planets, and most importantly, talk about how likely this detection means that there is life on this planet. Is this the first discovery of alien life anywhere? Or is this maybe just another LK-99? Remember that superconductor that went nowhere? Yeah. So basically let's talk about how scientific is this and how accurate are the results. But before we talk about the paper and before we talk about anything else, let's really discuss the gas first. A gas, dimethyl sulfide, that's recently been studied for a very different reason. It's actually one of the biggest contributors of various types of sulfides and specifically atmospheric aerosols on our own planet. Or to be more specific, when it enters the atmosphere, it seems to do several things. First, it encourages formation of clouds, and second, it releases sulfur aerosols, which normally reflect sunlight, basically serving as a kind of a reflector for planet Earth. Which is why so many different environmental scientists have been really interested in what exactly is happening here. But as I mentioned in the previous video, it's really only produced by life. There is no natural way we know of that produces this gas. A gas whose molecule looks like this. Sulfur, two carbons, and six atoms of hydrogen. And so I really wanted to find out, so okay, is there any way it can be produced naturally, as in without life? Do we have any evidence of the production of this gas through, for example, volcanic means? And pretty quickly the answer turned out to be no. Volcanoes tend to produce different types of sulfur compounds and there's no way they can produce DMS. And it turns out that dimethyl sulfide seems to be extremely common in locations like this where you can kind of see what's known as red algae. With quite a lot of different ocean organisms, specifically marine plankton, consuming what's known as DMSP or dimethyl sulfide propionate, a slightly more different organic compound, which is then converted to DMS as a type of a waste product. With this gas DMS potentially being the biggest waste product for most of the algae and most of the simple marine organisms out there. With this precursor, DMSP, usually breaking down this compound into one of two forms, either DMS or a slightly different compound known as methane thiol, both essentially only produced by life, representing a type of biosignature with neither produced in any other natural way, except for obviously chemical labs. In this case, DMS is actually produced by various labs for different chemical purposes. But this type of a chemical reaction does not seem to exist in nature, at least on planet Earth. And what's actually interesting about DMS is that there doesn't seem to be the upper limit for how much can be produced by various marine organisms. As long as there's enough sulfites coming from outside, DMS is going to come out as a waste and released into the atmosphere. Implying, of course, that more DMS means more marine life, at least on planet Earth. But what's really important here is that this is not a very stable compound. It will usually react with hydrogen to form methane or sometimes hydrogen sulfide. Interestingly, quite a lot of methane was discovered on this planet as well. Though by itself, neither methane nor hydrogen sulfide suggest life. They can be produced in natural ways as well. And so because of the production of DMS, only by life, for many years it was employed to be one of the potential biosignatures. And I actually managed to find some of the first papers that talk a little bit more about this in more detail, and two of them are by the very famous scientist from MIT, Sarah Seeger. 
a Canadian astronomer that has been extremely active in trying to figure out ways we can discover life on other planets. She is also a very big proponent of returning to Venus to potentially find life there as well. And so in a couple of papers, Seeger and her partners discuss various biosignatures that in theory could be found around certain planets hosting atmospheres with potential signs of water on the surface. With the original paper proposing DMS as one of the biggest biosignatures that we can find around various planets. Going as far as establishing what we might see if we look at these planets in various frequencies. They essentially create a kind of a spectroscopic graph for different types of planets, including planets with hydrogen, planets with nitrogen, or planets with CO2. Although here they only focus on four biosignatures, the ones you see right here, and the ones that we usually associate with life on planet Earth. And interestingly enough, in their analysis, they actually realize that it also depends on the star. If the star is very powerful and produces a lot of ultraviolet radiation, it's quite likely that we're going to find nothing. A lot of these molecules would be destroyed pretty quickly. But much smaller stars, and especially M-type stars that are somewhat quiet, would very likely produce positive results as long as there is life on those planets. And specifically, because DMS is what's known as the, a product of secondary metabolism, by seeing this in a planetary atmosphere, it's extremely unlikely that it's going to be produced by anything else. At least compared to a lot of other biosignatures, such as for example oxygen or methane, which can be easily produced by other means. And so we actually call this a type 3 biosignature. It's a product of consumption of something else, and at least in various types of zooplankton, is normally produced as a response to stress when the more complex DMSMP gets broken down by various types of enzymes. And this has been tested in a lab when the introduction of DSMP results in huge amounts of DMS being produced. But the thing is, on Earth, DMS disappears very quickly. It only has a lifetime of just a few days. It basically breaks down, eventually turning into sulfide oxides. And it's really those sulfide oxides that then act as aerosols. But on a different planet, possibly orbiting a red dwarf, there is a chance it might survive much longer and thus be much more abundant in the atmosphere. Intriguingly, that's precisely what's actually observed here as well. Even though DMS is only present in somewhat minute amounts on planet Earth, on K218b it seems to be all over the place. Or at least seems to be present in large amounts, according to that recent paper. And interestingly, previous predictions by Sarah Seeger from the two papers I showed you previously predicted a potential existence of hydrogen-rich planets that might be extremely abundant in DMS because of a relatively large biomass of a lot of different primitive life. To some extent, this is maybe what's being observed here as well. And so these unusual Hycean planets or Hycean worlds, planets containing a lot of hydrogen and potentially liquid water, in some sense would be perfect places to try to investigate if this gas exists in their atmosphere. Especially because these planets are much easier to analyze and to look at compared to rocky planets, meaning that James Webb can come to much more conclusive results much quicker. Which in essence is what happened here. We have a very very strong detection of methane and a very strong detection of carbon dioxide. Here the confidence level is 5 sigma, basically implying that it is maybe 0.001% by chance. And intriguingly, no detection of ammonia, which turns out to be one of the predictions from back in the days prediction of ocean worlds containing hydrogen atmospheres, where ammonia would disappear because of chemical reactions, with quite a lot of predictions potentially coming true from these observations. Or at least it seems so at first, because now we have to talk about the biases and the yeah but wait. So essentially let's dissect this and let's try to come to a conclusion of what is really happening on this unusual planet. First of all let's discuss the bias. The same professor who published this recent paper also published another one just a couple of years ago with the title that you see right here, Habitability and Biosignatures of Hycean Worlds. And as you can probably guess, that paper tried to predict what we're going to see around these planets, focusing on the discovery of biosignatures such as DMS. It wasn't the only compound, but it was definitely one of the main ones. If you read through the recent paper, you'll notice that this particular older paper is referenced quite a lot which usually for me at least is the first stop sign. Ok, so basically is this a kind of a confirmation bias? The researcher predicted something 
and now he or she is trying to confirm it using observations. Now, it might seem that way, but it usually depends on the quality of the data and the exact discoveries made in that study. So let's go with that. Let's see what was actually found here. In this case, this was analyzed using probability in order to confirm how likely are we seeing what we're seeing. You can actually see that for methane and CO2, it seems to be extremely likely. Once again here, the evidence was approximately 5 sigma. But for DMS, it's definitely not so clear cut. And for other biosignatures, it seems to be an almost certain no. As a matter of fact, the authors themselves state the obvious. The confidence levels for DMS are super low. The authors themselves state this as a marginal evidence, with a significance level of anywhere from 1 to 2.4. For one of the results, they even get zero. And usually anything below 3 in significance is not really worth considering. To some extent, you can even see this in the image released by the team from the James Webb. DMS levels are barely visible. It's not even clear if this is DMS or if it's something entirely different that just happens to have similar spectroscopy. As you can see, the authors even provide you with a graph to show us that it's not clear exactly what this is. And so the authors state that they find some evidence of DMS depending on how you analyze the data, but the actual significance depends on further observations in the future. One of the main reasons it seems to be so difficult to confirm this is because the spectral values for DMS seem to resemble other molecules as well, at least in near-infrared observations conducted by the James Webb, with the main conclusion in this case being that we now need to conduct additional observations in other frequencies that seem to be already planned for the next few months. As a matter of fact, DMS seems to have a very specific spectral signature around 7 micrometers. This should definitely be visible with future observations using mid-infrared frequencies by the James Webb. And so chances are we're not going to be able to confirm anything here for at least a few more months. Which means that there are going to be two possible answers. Either nothing is confirmed and this was a mistake, or DMS is confirmed, suggesting something is producing huge amounts of this unusual chemical on the surface of this planet. Here we're talking about millions of times more than on planet Earth. And though this could be some kind of a extraterrestrial life, it could also be some kind of a chemistry we still don't understand. And so at least as of today, as of September of 2023, the answer is nobody knows. It's still unclear, the actual observations and the actual details are not super detailed, and the levels of confidence for data is extremely low. So this planet definitely seems to contain methane and quite a lot of CO2, but everything else at this point is not certain. But whatever it is, we'll definitely be coming back and talking more about this in some of the future videos once there are additional observations. At the moment, this is one of the most exciting discoveries coming from the James Webb. Potential first discovery of alien life. Or potentially a mistake that we can then resolve by conducting additional observations. Stay tuned to discover more. Anyway, thank you for watching. We'll probably come back and talk more about this maybe in a few weeks from now. And in the meanwhile, check out the previous video in the description. Support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful. I'll see you tomorrow. And as always, bye-bye.